Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively new discovery and explanation of how our galaxy, the Milky Way, may have acquired really unusual ripples. Let's talk about this and welcome to the math. Now I wanted to start with this simulation of the Milky Way, this is from Universe Sandbox, where if you look at uh, what this galaxy looks like, in a sense this is sort of the uh, most common understanding of what galactic shapes might be like. For example, when people think of galaxies, they normally imagine something like this. However, this is actually incorrect. The most recent studies of our galaxy discovered that, for one, our galaxy is actually really warped. And at the same time, it has these unusual ripples um, at the sides of the actual galactic disk that are somewhat difficult to explain, but they've been observed several times and we know that they are present. So a more realistic representation of our galaxy may come from other similar galaxies that are, well, essentially spiraled bar galaxies like our own, but at the same time have more warped shapes, like for example, here are two galaxies that do have this unusual warping shape that you can quite easily see if you look at it with a telescope. These were taken with Hubble telescope, so these are pretty far away from us. So we know that some galaxies do have this warp shape and our explanation for this is usually something to do with some sort of a galactic collision. But what about the Milky Way? How did it acquire this warp? And also how did it acquire these ripples? Well, the warp shape I've explained in one of the previous videos, but the ripples have actually not been explained until relatively recently. And the explanation for why our galaxy has these unusual ripples right here near the end comes from um, an actual prediction that was made back in 2009 by this professor from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Now, she wrote a paper back in 2009 that predicted that these ripples probably came from some sort of a galactic collision between the Milky Way and a galaxy that was most likely very very high in dark matter. In other words, a very dim galaxy that was really difficult to see, but that had a lot of mass that was mostly composed of dark matter. And back then we had no idea if this was true or what galaxy she might be referring to. It was only a theoretical model, but it just so happens that earlier this year, or technically at the end of last year, uh, in 2018, we discovered a galaxy that was very dim, but very, very high in dark matter. The galaxy known as Antlia 2, also known as Ant 2, was discovered in the Gaia catalog, and I've actually made a video about this earlier that should appear as a link somewhere above my head right now. So this galaxy was a very unusual discovery because it was very dim, but it was very massive and possessed a lot of dark matter. And because it's a relatively recent discovery, we still don't really know much about it, except for, of course, its location in the night skies. Um, this is where it is in comparison to a uh, large Magellanic cloud. And also we know that it's very high in mass, uh, full of dark matter, and uh, most likely is the reason why these ripples were formed. And we know all of this because Professor Chakrabarti uh, recalculated her original hypothesis and was able to simulate uh, the potential creation of these um, ripples by using her ideas. And so we even have a simulation that shows what may have happened uh, earlier in the history of the galaxy, approximately 3 billion years ago. Here you can kind of see uh, four different perspectives of how the ripples of our galaxy may have been created through the collision with Antlia 2 galaxy and how it then turned into a kind of a ring around our own galaxy. In other words, approximately 3 billion years ago, um, the galactic collision resulted in the ripples and also in this new partner that we currently have that was only found roughly around six months ago uh, by the Gaia telescope. And because the original prediction suggested that this galaxy most likely has a tremendous amount of dark matter, as we now believe it does, it creates a perfect opportunity for us to study a nearby galaxy that potentially is a source of a tremendous amount of dark matter. So maybe this will allow us to finally solve this dark matter mystery once and for all. Now, in terms of the actual parameters of the galaxy, it does make it somewhat difficult to study it because it's roughly around 10,000 times less bright or basically fainter than the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud galaxy that you can kind of see right here. And that's the galaxy that usually you can see pretty well in the night skies if you travel in the southern hemisphere. So this galaxy is relatively bright, but unfortunately Ant 2 is not. 
at the same time it's roughly around 100 times more diffuse. In other words, it has roughly around 100 times less stars per volume than this galaxy. So it's difficult to study it, it's difficult to see it, but it does have a lot of mass. Large enough to have caused these ripples in our galaxy. So this means that most unusual shapes we see in other galaxies like ripples or unusual folds or bends are probably caused by similar collisions like the ones we've just analyzed in our own galaxy. In other words, galaxies really are the sum of all parts. It's not just a collection of stars and dark matter and black holes, it really is a collection of smaller galaxies that came together, interacted with each other, and then eventually created what we observe as the typical galaxy in the night sky. And this of course also means that every single galaxy out there is going to be unique, it's going to have its own history, and it is going to be composed of all sorts of interactions with other galaxies and dark matter. So let's finish this video by colliding a large Magellanic Cloud with the Milky Way and hopefully you'll learn a little bit more about the universe from this video, hopefully now you know how our galaxy formed those unusual ripples, and most importantly, hopefully you'll subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and share this video with someone who enjoys space and universe. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.